Welcome back to the Otto Ranch. Today we have kind of an interesting one and a special guest. We have a 22 Cadillac CT5 Blackwing. It's not mine, but it is my friend Nate's, and uh, he's here with us. Uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit about his, uh, his build. He's a very uh, big car enthusiast like myself. Uh, and uh, I'll let you talk a little bit about the car, how you, how you spec'd it and the process you went through. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Jason, and thanks for having me here today. And I appreciate you keeping the car for the last week as I uh, had a little construction project going on at my house. But uh, yeah, I'm a lifelong car enthusiast. Um, I've owned three Corvettes. I'm sort of brand loyal to the General Motors uh, vehicles, but I've been reading road and track really my whole life. Um, so I, I just love sports cars. Um, I had a C5, I had a C7, I had a C8. Um, and I really liked all of them. <clears throat> and there was, on the C8, which I had recently, uh, there was really nothing to like other than, excuse me, nothing not to like other than the fact that it didn't have a manual transmission. And um, I understand all the reasons that, that they had the paddle shifts. And in fact, with the dual clutch on that car, it was really, really fast and, and amazing uh, to drive. But I, as a, as a person that likes to drive cars on the street, um, I like the engagement of a manual. I grew up in Muncie, Indiana, where we used to build manual transmissions back in the day. If you ever heard of Muncie Four Speed, so that kind of brought me back to um, to this vehicle. And a couple of things I liked about it: number one, I have three kids, so being able to go to cars and coffee with my children um, and have them in the back is kind of cool. And in all the Corvettes that I've owned, I never had a Z06 or never had the top performance level. Uh, so I never had an LT4 uh, or supercharged um, engine, so I, I really was attracted to that. And frankly, I, I was able to get this at MSRP. Nice. Um, but I've been reading the car magazines and everybody was raving about it. And so um, I just naturally kind of went to this vehicle. Um, I spec'd it out with a manual transmission, as I mentioned. Um, this vehicle did not have any carbon fiber options on it um, because it was on restriction. But I was able to, to, um, to spec the interior uh, like I wanted, which uh, has some red seat belts, which are kind of cool that contrast uh, with the black and white. I uh, did get a sunroof. Again, it's a, it's a street car, not a track car. Um, and, and the one option I did not go for was the carbon fiber brakes. Now, for those of you that are familiar with like a Z51 package on a Corvette, when you get the Z51 package, you get bigger brakes, you get better suspension. Uh, you get different gear ratios, that type of thing, a more performance area in a vehicle for 9,000 bucks to get basically um, bigger brakes that are really only calibrated for the track and probably don't last as long. Uh, I went ahead and, and did not do that. And so as you Those can are see, pretty, hefty brakes. pretty good sized brakes there. Um, it doesn't look small at all. Um, if there's anything I don't like about the car since we're staring at the wheels, it's probably that. Um, they don't look bad, but there's too many spokes, so it takes forever to clean. And frankly, it hides what I consider to be a yeah. really nice yeah. brake caliper. Um, I could have got those in blue, but I thought the red would, would offset it a little yeah. bit. But then again, you can't even really see them. That's a massive ro brake room. Correct. So the other ones with carbon fiber. Um, another thing I like about the car is the, uh, the engine is hand-built in Bowling Green at the Performance uh, Build Center. And uh, never met her before, but it's it's not just dudes like us anymore. Latrice <laughs> Carruthers, if you're out there watching, making dreams come true. Nice. Um, building engines. But this is an LT4. Um, they were in the last front engine C7 Corvette in the Z06 model. Um, this chassis, basically, if you were to pull this body up off the car, you could put a Camaro body right back on it. And this is essentially like a ZL1 chassis. So this car is, is manufactured in Lansing, Michigan. Oh, nice. um, and this one's rated in the, in the C7s and in the, in the uh, ZL1 Camaro, it's rated at 650 horsepower. Um, this car is rated at 668 horsepower. And <laughs> it probably cranks out a little bit more than that, but for those- Two under the Z06, yeah. right? The new Z06 Corvette with a flat plane crank is 670, so you can't be above the brand new top dog car from Bowling Green. So it's rated uh, at two <laughs> horsepower less than that. Um, I have not had this dyno. It's got about 1,500 miles on it. I've not tracked it, um, but I am going to the um, to the uh, Spring Mountain uh, Ron Fellows Driving School next week. Uh, as most of you are familiar, if you buy a Corvette or a Camaro or one of these, 
you get a voucher from GM to go out there for a discount. So I've done that twice. Nice. And uh, so that'll be cool to go out there and do that. Will you get to drive a Blackwing? I get to drive a Blackwing. Oh, wow. I chose a manual. Um, and the best part about going out to Spring Mountain, I highly recommend it, is um, it's a very controlled and safe environment. They, they teach you a lot about how to hit apexes of turns. And you get to drive these cars balls out and you beat on somebody else's equipment instead of your own. Nice. So that's uh, that's one of the benefits of, of utilizing that. So um, overall, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the car. I got paint protection film. I'm gonna replace the badge in the front and the rear in black. Uh, couldn't get the black emblems from the factory, but I did put them on, on, the, on the sides here the other day. And I do have a wing, and uh, I'm gonna have that installed as well. I'll do that this weekend. Um, but the carbon fiber, you know, would have gone here on the rockers. It would have gone on the rear wing. Uh, you could have a front splitter, a rear diffuser, and then on the back of the seats, if you got a, another level of carbon fiber, it would replace this material with That's carbon fiber. That's a pretty fiber. aggressive looking seat. It almost kind of looks like a Recaro seat. It, it, it almost does, yeah. But again, for the price, I paid about 95000 for this. Okay. Um, in the 22 model year, they built uh, about 1,650 of these black wings, and um, over 900 of them were manual, actually. So wow. the take rate's pretty high um, for manual transmissions, which again, was one of the main drivers of why I decided to, um, to get this vehicle. But by not having all the carbon fiber stuff, it kind of made it into a sleeper car, which I like and probably save me ten thousand dollars so there's some big time those are 305s right they are 305s 30s. in the back is, are those 20s is that what those uh, are i believe they are and they are the uh the, the, the uh, michelin uh pilot uh sports that are commonly on corvettes so it's a, a known quantity there um the 19s you know, actually it'll have no problem lighting them up if you uh if that's what you choose to do well, we've talked about I, I think that's the best performance tire you can get that's reasonable for the street. You know, you can get Cup 2s, but they're ridiculous, you know, on the street. But that's the best daily performance tire you can put on a car. Right, correct. So, overall, I would highly recommend these vehicles. Um, if you like a performance sedan, um, you know, the word is they're going to build, they're building these in 23, although they raised the price about $8,000. <laughs> I love it. They, did they wanted to Camaro. transfer that margin from the dealership balance sheet back to the manufacturer balance sheet. Um, they're going to build them in 2024. And then once that's over, um, Cadillac is planning to go electric. So they'll have uh, new, new vehicles like the Lyric uh, that you've heard about. Uh, the new Escalade in 25 is supposed to be electric. Um, and then they've got some other sedans that have come out. I'm assuming that they'll be doing... Uh, some performance vehicles as well. So in my mind, this was sort of like a collector item. There's very limited production, kind of the last of the you know high performance manual transmission for sure, uh, performance sedan, so that was cool. And I've always been a, a fan of the Grand Nationals. <laughs> nice. So a, a sleeper car, they didn't build very many of them. If you look at Grand Nationals now, they go for two and three times what they cost back in the uh, 80s. So if, uh, if, if I end up having this car for that long, which will probably go to my kids, then uh, it'll be a sweet car to have and maybe they'll make a little bit of money on it. So. Nice. Yeah. And it'll hold its value. I, I mean, realistically, they're not making a lot of these. Right. They're only making them on a limited limited number. I mean, right. people love the manual transmissions. It's kind of like I always tell people on cars like that. It's kind of like this in the GT500. They're, yeah, they're expensive. You pretty much can drive them for free. Yeah. Because realistically, in a, in a you know a year or two, they don't really. I mean, I know people are gonna say, oh, the market's you know is changing. Yeah, but they're still rare, and there's still demand for them. They'll sell every one that they make this year. Correct. Yeah, I uh, I got lucky. The uh, the dealership here that I bought from was called Camargo. Um, Greg um, Greg Meyer uh, was the guy that helped. Greg and Brad, excuse me, father son, extremely helpful. Did a great job, um, and they. Sold the car to me at MSRP. My father-in-law has bought a lot of Cadillacs from them, so we had a relationship and we basically had a handshake agreement where it was like, if we see this thing on eBay two weeks later and <laughs> trying to make 10 grand, we're gonna be pissed off at you. And I, I told him, I, I assure you that I'm, I'm planning to hang on to this one for a while. So we'll have this and I'm in the electric vehicle fleet business, so I'm gonna probably get uh, some type of electric vehicle here in the near future after I get my garage done. So we'll have one of each and 
uh, again, just really thankful to uh, to be able to have something like this because it's a, a really nice car. And frankly, it's it's kind of cool being a, a lifelong car enthusiast and a road and track magazine reader to be able to actually see vehicles that are tested and rewarded and you know uh, fawned over. <clears throat> you actually have one in the garage um, and not a you know lower trim level or lower performance level. I mean, this is the uh, the cat dad so yeah. well you worked hard in your life you're at a point in your in your life where you know you should you should have something nice you know you i was like that too you started in the lower trims you always wish you had the big daddy and you know yeah. at some point you're like no i'm gonna get the big daddy right and then and that sunday was <laughs> about <laughs> six months ago nice so yeah but anyways it's uh it's great to be here and thanks again jason no no yeah me. let's let's uh, let me open the door a little bit if you want to start it up i'd yeah. love to let people uh let's do it. get to hear it Thing, it can get away from you in a hurry. It's just got a whole lot. I've 